Hello, welcome to Conversations with Educators. I'm your host, Jerome Ellison, and today I have a special guest, Louisa Butler. Thank you, Louisa, for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I'd like to start with a quick game. This game is called Pass or Fail, right? So I give you a topic, and you tell me whether you pass it, good, or fail it, bad, based on your opinion of that topic, right? So okay. um, snow days in school, do you pass it or fail it? And why? Fail it. It's just not safe. Thinking okay. about the safety of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So you'd rather kids stay home like we used to? All right. Yes. Cool. Cool. So do you think that they should be home in remote learning or do you think they should be home and have a day off of school and be able to have some time to themselves? Um, I feel a, a little bit of both. Okay. Um, they can have, you know, maybe an hour or two of just like some instruction remote mm -hmm. and then, you know, like kind of just be a kid, enjoy your day. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I need that downtime, right? Those are some of the, those experiences playing in the snow are like some of the most memorable times that you remember, even as an adult. So yeah, I think we can't get rid of that completely. Um, all right, so let's get started. So my, my first question is, um, when did you know that you wanted to be an educator and why? Um, so this is a good question. Um, I knew I wanted to become an educator when I realized I liked helping and supporting and just like guiding people. Um, so it started out with just like people in my life, um, started out with friends, with family, like siblings. Um, and then I got really serious about it in high school um, where I was helping out classmates and my high school art teacher, she was just like, you should be a teacher. You should go into education. Like, you what was your really response? Good. What was your response at that point? I think my first time hearing it, I was like, hmm, no, I don't know about that. But then, you know, she had, at the time, she had gone on maternity leave and, you know, she was, she's my favorite teacher mm -hmm. from high school. So mm -hmm. um, I guess like just going through that experience, I was like, yeah, no, I, I stepped up um, as one of her like best students. And I was just like helping out, you know, around the classroom, helping mm -hmm. everybody stay on track. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you had that skill and you had to manage a large classroom and how to keep people on task. And right? that's an important yeah. skill, as you know, uh, as a teacher. Um, yeah. All right, then. So about being a teacher, what was the most fulfilling thing? Or what's the best thing you would say about being an educator? Um, I would say the best thing about being an educator uh, for me is having those golden moments of just like being able to step back mm -hmm. from, you know, being that instructional kind of role in the room and just kind of like observing, like really mm -hmm. just stop and watch what's happening. And it could be, you know, kids are engaged in the lesson. Kids are just like talking with each other or maybe they're like working through like a problem, mm -hmm. but they like, this is like right before they like ask for help. Mm -hmm. Like they're like trying to figure it out before they like come to you. And I think those golden moments are like, that's where they're like, they're being their self, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they get to kind of just show you like who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think like those moments, I think they're the most happiest. And oh. so for me, my main goal even above like academics is like, are they happy? Whoa. And so being able to see those, those things happening in the classroom, it's like, you know, getting swept away with academics and mm -hmm. like getting through your lesson, you mm -hmm. kind of almost like forget that like, this is a good like space to just be in right now. Like, look at them, they're talking, they're, mm -hmm. they're learning, like they're growing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I love for that. Me, that, that. Yeah. For me, yeah. that's what success looks like. Mm -hmm. I love that. And one thing that I want to like touch on that you mentioned is like the moments in the classroom where they, they're happy or when they find their most joy. And I think, you know, honestly, teaching now in the pandemic, a lot of people are having a difficult time finding that point for them, right? There's a lot of teachers leaving the system. There's students who are not happy in the classrooms. There's administrators who are not happy in the school buildings, you know. Um, what is it that you think, uh, what happens or... Uh, what moments can you pull from that you experience for students or teachers or administrators are actually being genuinely happy or finding joy? How do people find joy nowadays during these times? 
Um, well, from my own experience, like I definitely, especially going through the pandemic with the students, I can definitely feel like this is tough. This is a mm-hmm. tough time that we're in. But um, some ways that like I'm able to find that joy is just you know, a lot of the kids have spent a lot of time like watching movies, like they're mm-hmm. indoors. And so I ask them about the movies that they like and mm-hmm. I play the soundtrack like mm-hmm. as they're working. Mm-hmm. And like, it's fun to just like let them sing and like let mm-hmm. them kind of just dance and be creative. So, um, yeah. and honestly, those movies, I like them too. I'm a <laughs> so, yeah. That's cool. Like bringing that interest into the classroom, like listening to them and finding out what they actually do outside of school and trying to incorporate that in the classroom as well. And like not, like you said, another thing is like not making it so heavily academic, giving them some time to be free and to let down their guard and be a little, you know, looser in the classroom makes them want to come to school, makes them excited about coming to school. And and the more you get to know about them, the more relationships you can build with them. And they'll be excited just to come and hang out with you as a teacher in the classroom. Right. And that's, that's helpful as well to get them engaged and keep their attendance rate up as well. So great, great points. All right, last section. Um, This is called Choose Your Teachers Wisely. So you kind of mentioned uh, one of your favorite teachers, but I want you to think about your entire experience in school. Who is the most memorable teacher or your favorite teacher you've ever had and why? What was it about that teacher? Um. This one's tough. I have a, I have a few, but um, <laughs> just I take think, one. <laughs> yeah, I think if I had to pick just one, I would say um, that would be my college professor um, and mentor, uh, Max, Dr. William C. Maxwell. I don't know mm. if you're watching. <laughs> what college Shout is this? Um, College of New Rochelle. Nice. He, he was um, he was like the best mentor. Honestly, he was real with mm. you. You know, he definitely heard me out. Um, he gave me a lot of support and then mm. not in a, you know, coddling kind mm. of way. He was just like, mm. you need this push. Mm-hmm. And I think I appreciated that most from him, um, just being able to, like, get that. And especially, like, in college, you're, you're figuring out what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I think he, he kind of, like, solidified just, like... Mm are going to be an educator and this is how you're going to do it and mm. you can do it so mm-hmm. yeah. right. he gave you that validation seems like right and he was an educator himself so that kind of like reassures you that you can actually get this done and then be successful at it that's great yeah and, and to your point like one thing that always stands out for the teachers who you know care about you outside of that classroom right and you said um he kept it real with you right and sometimes that's what you have to do right and sometimes students in the moment, they don't really, you know, may not realize it or may not accept it, but they listen to you, right? And then the years down the line, they may realize it and see how important that information was and how it actually influenced them and helped them get through that journey. And then they look back and actually, you know, respect it and appreciate it like you did. So shout out to your professor. What's his name again? Dr. William C. Maxwell, or just Max. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Professor Max. Yeah, you made a difference, definitely. <laughs> um, all right, thank you, Louisa. That was all. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. And you shared some, some great things and um, some great perspectives. So thank you again for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, thanks. That's all. Um, thank you guys for watching. Stay blessed. And remember, education over everything. Bye.